The fire is in the stands. The flavor of the game. The atmosphere is delicious. At Bank of California Stadium, the experience is ever expansive and so are the culinary offerings. I'm Chef Maddie Land, and this is Tastemakers. Jeff. Hey Tyler, welcome. Thanks for coming by. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I heard that you enjoy cooking and enjoy I eating. Do. We're gonna do a little bit of that today. Awesome. We're gonna do a braised short rib, truffle celery root puree, some black trumpet mushrooms, and uh, we're all going to pair this with the Coppola Claret, which is an awesome wine to cook with this time of year. It sounds delicious. Let's start with the short ribs. So short ribs, you know, it's a big, fat, rich, meaty cut down by the, the belly, okay. right? Great this time of year, it's one of those long braised items. It's yeah. something that goes great with red wine. You know, if you, you imagine beef stew and all those kinds yes. of flavors, like yes. that's, that's what we're aiming at, right? It's a very nostalgic meal for me. I grew up on that, especially in the East Coast when it got cold. Awesome. I love stew in the winter. Yeah, and, then, and I know we're in Southern California now, yeah, but, but the, that pulls back, right? Yes. You know, pulls it back to home, yes. right? We've seared these. And we started in a pot here, and in this pot we have mirepoix, which is carrots and celery root and onions and garlic, and we have a lot of our aromatic herbs like thyme and, and rosemary. To that we've added uh, at least a bottle and a half of our Coppola Claret and some beef stock. And now that's gonna go in, we're gonna cover this now and bring it up to temperature. And once that comes up to temperature, we're now gonna take it, go in the oven, cook for three, three and a half hours. And we want that to be really tender. And yeah. And so this has just come out, it's cooked. You get all those rich, deep flavors. It's on this big, long, almost Fred Flintstone-like bone. Okay. And uh, we want to serve a whole bone. We're athletes, we need to eat. It takes a lot of food. Exactly. So I'm gonna pull this out. If you'll do it, you'll see that we have three big bones here. And I think for us, we want to take this right here. So I'm gonna set it up like this, and if you can see right here, we come right down like this. Okay. It's kind of at the angle, right? All right. Cool? Yes. All right, yeah, have a rip at it. Yep. Perfect. There we go. Awesome. So I know a little bit about this because you know we do feed you on on your yes. game days, yes. but uh, on, on a regular day, what kind of eating do you guys do? Yeah. yeah so we're on a pretty uh, low carb diet, so that way, just towards the end of the week, we can take advantage of eating a high carb meal, so that way it'll fuel us for the game. So typically on a weekday, we have a lot of fish or chicken or, or beef paired with some veggies and then a nice salad on the side too. So this would be a not typical of a match week. Not yeah. typical, but I'm very excited to, uh, to try this and I didn't need a big lunch, so. I'm gonna pour a little wine for you here. Thank you. And we enjoy. And please feel free to imbibe while we're cooking here. Well, cheers. Yes, cheers. You said you do a little bit of cooking at home. What do you make when you're when you're making food. Yeah, so I love hosting dinner parties and having some buddies come over and, and just cooking kind of whatever I can find online. Uh, a lot of times I'll go to the sites on Instagram or something like that and find recipes. And they're kind of like my taste testers and they tell me if it's good. <laughs> so probably my best meal is chicken parm. All right. I cook that and then also sometimes on the grill I'll make like a salmon with some zucchini and asparagus on the side. That's, I mean, that's not easy stuff to make, you know, and, and then honestly when somebody that can figure out how to cook fish, I think you, I think you know what you're doing. Yeah, I, I've, I've had a few, few times where it didn't turn out so well, but I think I've finally gotten it down to where it's uh, just juicy and tender enough. Yeah, obviously food in my life is, is pretty important, but for you, it's one of your passions. So why do you love what you do? I, well, you know, I appreciate you asking me that, you know, because food to me is, is it's really important. And it's one of those things that, you know, obviously everybody has to eat, but when you can bring people together and, and work together as a team, yeah. That's something that's that I think is uh, universal, and, and for me, you know, the the beauty of food is really taking. And this is a great meal to explain it, like yeah. taking these these uh, underused uh, un small cuts and turning them into something beautiful just because you paid attention to it. Yes, you know, and that time and that effort that you put in, uh, you know, that pays off at the yeah. end. And and I think that's that that's sort of the magic of cooking that I think is amazing. Like the small little details that you put into it, and then it comes into this whole 
huge, beautiful culmination. Yeah, man, and yeah. I think it's something that's probably very familiar to you with yes. just the practice and, and all that, all that what you guys do. Like, you know, this is not something that happens overnight. It, it, it happens, you have to put the effort and the time and the, the attention into it. Some dishes like this, they take four, five, six hours, and, and, yeah. and you have to let that time develop, yeah. you know, and, and to turn into something, you know, but if you spend that time, it turns into something yes. amazing. One of my favorite moments on the field would be when I'm working on something so hard for a week or a month or a year, and finally I get to this point where I do it in a game, and then just that overwhelming joy and just kind of just satisfaction of, I've put so much effort and time into this, and finally it's starting to pay off. Part of the reasons why I love competing and playing soccer. Well listen, cheers to you. So happy to have you here. Uh, let's enjoy. Absolutely, thank you. This is warming up now and we want to move to the next phase. Saute and actually braise down some of these black trumpet mushrooms. So again, we're getting into October now and, and black trumpet mushrooms are one of those items that it's really special and it's really great the time of year when they start coming around. So these are a wild mushroom okay. and they're foraged. So, you know, we get them, we clean them, we're, we're pulling out all sorts of pine needles where, where they grow and, and they're very prevalent in these areas right now. So if, actually, if you want to start, we can grab some of that oil here and just give a nice little, little pour down the bottom, just kind of coat the bottom of the pan there. Perfect, right there. How did you actually get into cooking? What inspired you? You know, it's a, it's a funny story. You know, when I was a little bit more rebellious young, young guy, I kind of told my mom what I was going to do when I was going to be a vegetarian, which I know is ironic here. <laughs> yeah. And she said, great, go cook for yourself then. Oh. And just to be an obstinate young guy, I'd said, okay, I'll show you. And that really started my path, you know, so yeah. it all started at home and it's a lot of uh, time with my dad who loved watching all the old PBS cooking shows and just kind of really fed into where I wanted to be, you know, and, and over time, you know, I tried a lot of things, but I always came back and always came back to this. Yeah. You know, and, and it, it turned into be a great thing for me and, and obviously brought me here, which has been outstanding. That's awesome. Same for you. How did how did you get going with soccer? I grew up in a in a family of two older brothers, so I kind of followed their path. And whatever they were doing, I wanted to do. And 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 so my middle brother and older brother, Jason and Kyle, they both played soccer. Uh, one was a goalie, the other was a forward. I kind of had to pick in between, like which one I wanted to do. And I wasn't the best field player, but I decided to go with what Jason did and be a goalie. And it, it worked out. And. Uh, I'd say it worked out. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. But they, they've kind of just pushed me to, to get my career started and they've supported me so much. My brothers and my parents along the way and I mean I wouldn't be here without them. While we're talking I'm going to have you take some of this. So this is a really really fine dice of onions and celery root and it's the same mirepoix that we, we use to cook here. Okay. And we want to use it with the mushrooms as well. Right. So while those get a little thing you can take those we'll just go straight in. And then a couple turns of pepper, a little bit of salt in there, and we're gonna let that season and let it cook away. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Last thing we're gonna have you add into here. So we made a little reduction right there, and that's that, that liquid up there. This one? Yeah, now we've taken the Coppola Claret and we've brought it down to a little bit of a syrup and we're gonna braise it. So you can add just about a quarter of that right in there and just let it go. Yeah, keep going, keep going. That's about right. I won't let that cook down to that. If you want to grab, you can grab just some of the herbs. We'll strip yeah. them off. We'll go right in here. Yeah. Perfect. Maybe some of that rosemary too. This one too? Great. Yeah. You can just lop off the top and throw the whole thing right in. What it's going to do is it's going to really perfume that. It's going to, you know, the flavor is going to marry in and, and that red wine, it's going to come together with the red wine that we used to braise the, the short ribs in. And at the end of the day, everything's going to be like one harmonious little unit there. See, this is where I need to improve my cooking game. Cooking is actually very simple, yes. you know, and I think a lot of people try to overthink it, but those little easy things, a little fresh herb, a little bit of great wine, yes. and there you go, you know, you got a great, great result. Go. All right, so while these are cooking down, I'm going to move the last element of, of our dish, and that's this truffled celery root puree. Okay. Are you familiar with celery root? No, I'm not. All right, so at the bottom of celery is this large root bowl. Okay. And it has the same fresh flavor of celery, but it works more like a, like a root vegetable, almost okay. like a potato, right? Okay. So you can create these really great creamy purees out of them. And again, yep. that's just one of those, it's a cold weather, yes. braised beef, sop it all up with a, a ripped piece of make, bread. Makes you feel warm inside. Exactly. But we're gonna kinda make it a little bit more special. Right there, and that small dish this is one. a finer truffled salt. So you can get a little with it. We're just starting into, uh, oh, wow. that's, that's right, nice. amazing, right? That's We're nice. just starting white truffle season. So if you want to give a nice, two nice pinches right in there, again, it's just got a great aroma and, and it's going to add this like flavor that's just going to be sort of like, it's this umami flavor. You're not really going to tell what it is. It's just going to yeah. be more, right? 
So this is really the three components that we have to our dish. So what made you choose this type of wine? So again, with those, those long simmered braised dishes, beef dishes, you know, we go back to like beef bourguignon, right? That's right. a kind of classic like yeah. French beef stew, you know, and it's always like a burgundy or a cabernet, right? Okay. And so with the claret, we have a cabernet sauvignon. It's grown here in California, but that's gonna be that great, deep, rich red wine flavor that we want for that. So you add the apples and the, and the carrots and, and the bacon, you get a little smoke, and it's just like this really, really nice, a little bit sweet. It really brings out all the flavor. Really makes it pop. So that's one of those great things about it. So then we're gonna plate this up because I think our next step, we're gonna warm this up, plate it, and we're gonna enjoy it. Perfect, I'm starving. How long were you a vegetarian for? You know, I, honestly, like even now, like I wouldn't call myself vegetarian, but like I eat vegetarian like yeah. almost exclusively just because, you know, the rest of your day you're here, you're, yeah, I yeah. mean, the number of hot dogs I eat is, is, <laughs> it's, yeah. is astounding. I mean, you know, there's, we, we've done hot dog tastings where we've eaten 30 hot dogs in an hour and it's just like, you, you want to, yeah. you know, so when I go home, I, you know, I eat like a salad. You want to feel healthy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yourself. you know. My dad was a vegetarian for like 25 years and he just gave it up uh, a few years ago. Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, so what, what turned him? Because I, I know what turned me. Uh, f for him, it was, uh, I had a game, and uh, it was like a championship game. When I was at Northwestern, we won the Big Ten Championship, and I said, okay, if we win this game, like, you have to eat a cheesesteak. Where are you from, actually? I'm from New Jersey. New Jersey. Where in New Jersey? Uh, South Jersey, called Woodbury. Okay. Yeah, it's right outside Philly. And so, cheesesteaks, obviously, were very prominent in Philadelphia, and so, like, I told him, like, okay, if we win this game, you have to eat a cheesesteak. We won the game and then I flew home like uh, five days later and we went and had a cheese steak together and I think that kind of just brought him back. <laughs> that moment. Yeah, me, it, it, was, uh, it was ribs. So we're gonna take okay. this, right? And again, it should not be perfect and precise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it yeah, should yeah. kind of fall where it needs to go, yeah. but it's gonna be. I'll watch you and I'll try yeah. to do what you do. I mean, basically I'm literally just gonna come down here and give a nice little pull like that, right? Okay. And then I'm gonna grab these. Drop one of those right there. And if you can grab those mushrooms. Absolutely. Yep, perfect. Go right across like that. Nice. You can just want to drop those mushrooms right across the top. Perfect. Just let them fall right where they, where they are. And that's a good one. You should do that one too. Finishing off, we're going to drizzle a little more of this red wine essence here. Last thing is we're going to pull them. This is the tops of fennel. Okay. You know, you can smell that. It's real, real aromatic and fresh. And after all those oh, yeah. kind of heavy, rich flavors, we yeah. want to add just something that kind of pops, right? So we add the little fennel fronds right across the top. And that's going to be that, that freshness that we need to kind of cut through. And after that, I think we should Thank you. share a glass of wine and enjoy this great meal. Cheers. Thank you so much for being in the kitchen. Thank you for having me. Why is it that food is such an important factor for our stadium? You know, when we started opening up the stadium, it was really important to the team that we go out into the community yeah. and find partners that were going to exhibit what's really happening in Los Angeles. Yeah. I mean, this is the first stadium that's been built in Los Angeles in 30, 40 years, right? So they really wanted something that was going to represent the city, represent the, the people that come to the games. And uh, I think we did a pretty good job of it.